The NBA on NBC is brought to you by New Miller Beer. The brand new beer from Miller with big flavor that goes down easy. By Jeep, makers of the new award-winning Jeep Grand Cherokee. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. Welcome back to Orlando, Florida, as we get set to uh, show you the starting line. It's the last team that was swept from the playoffs in three straight seasons, the Chicago Stags of the late 40s. The Stags led by Max Zlowski and Andy Phillip. And Orlando does not want to uh, be on that uh, same line in the NBA record books with the Chicago Stags. Uh, look at the Chicago Bulls starting lineup, Michael Jordan and Rod Hopper in the backcourt. And up front, Luke Longley with Scotty Pippen and Dennis Rodman. Pippen coming off a sensational 27-point game on Saturday afternoon. Phil Jackson, who said when he met Brian Hill before game three out at half court to shake his hand, he asked him what next could go wrong to his team. Well, he found out during the game when Nick Anderson went down with the uh, wrist problem. And as we uh, check out the Magic lineup, you'll note a couple of changes. Well, Penny Hardaway is there, but Anthony Bowie will start for Nick Anderson. Bowie made only four starts during the regular season. Shaquille O'Neal, the starting center. Dennis Scott still trying to fight his way out of the shooting slump. And it will be John Conkac. There was some thought that Joe Wolf would get the call, but uh, Conkac will be uh, the starter despite the knee problem. There's Brian Hill, the head coach of the Magic, yesterday on Showtime. Pete Fessy reported that Brian Hill might be in trouble. There could be interest in Chuck Daly. Well, John Gabriel, the Magic general manager, told our... Jim Gray earlier that uh, Hill is not in trouble. He said that Hill will return next season as Orlando's coach. Well, I would uh, tend to believe John Gabriel because, first of all, at this time of the year, you're not even thinking about or talking about. However, but during a playoff series, there's always that kind of talk about coaching changes, especially the way this series has gone. Danny Crawford working with Hugh Hollins and, and Vic Pavetta. And uh, on the opening tip, uh, the ruling that uh, the ball, apparently someone jumped in too quickly on uh, part of the Chicago Bulls was Michael Jordan trying to get the edge. So it is Orlando with the first possession as Hardaway works against Pippen. We're just underway in game four. Hardaway in the lead, and O'Neal is fouled. Well, Brian Hill and his coaching staff putting in a couple of new wrinkles and a couple of new plays at yesterday's practice, and this is one of them. Getting a pick and roll to the middle of the floor, something that's been very difficult for them to do because the Bulls have been forcing their pick and rolls from that side of the floor down to the baseline. But this one got Kenny Hardaway to the middle and a good pass to Shaq. Foul committed by Longley, and uh, Shaq gets the crowd going, following up on the one for nine on Saturday by hitting his first two. Light pressure being shown as Dennis Scott hangs back against Scotty Pippen. Jordan is being played here at the start by Bowie. Longley sets the pick. Longley with a shot clock down on four is called for traveling. Well, the Bulls taking a lot of time as the Magic defense pressuring them into not a good look on any kind of offense. A key for Chicago is keeping Luke Longley and Dennis Rodman out of early foul trouble. That's what happened to them in game two, and that's how Orlando got an 18-point lead. O'Neal again led by Hardaway. It's a 4-0 Magic lead. Scotty Pippen thought he saw the opening. Dennis Scott able to stay with him. The Orlando Magic try to bounce back from an embarrassing performance here on Saturday. Held to just 67 points, second lowest in NBA playoff history since the advent of the 24-second uh, shot clock. Pippen firing from downtown and kept alive by Rodman. Well, right away, you can see the fervor and the passion in the, in the Magic's defense to start this ballgame out. Something different. Michael Jordan putting the Bulls on the scoreboard. Shaquille O'Neal is held by Ron Hopper, who would not allow the shot of the crowd. Looking for a flagrant foul call, but it, it is a, a personal foul. 
Michael Jordan just getting that little handoff from uh, Dennis Robin and a good look as Shaquille guarding Robin too slow to get out and challenge Jordan's shot. And that was called a uh, non-shooting uh, foul. Jordan able to deflect it to the backcourt. Oh, Jordan got picked off by contact. The steal by Scott. Hardaway. Oh, the magic opening up in very alert fashion. We did not see this at all on Saturday. And you have to wonder why, Barb. It's just a matter of getting ready and playing at a playoff-type intensity. And that's what we're seeing here at the beginning of this ballgame for Orlando. Chicago looking a lot like the Magic, especially in games one and three. Foul away from the ball called on contact. Orlando could not get started in game one, and they were blown out. They could not finish game two as the Bulls came back from an 18-point deficit, and they had the horrendous performance in game three on Saturday. Off the double team, the foul is called. Orlando attempting to trap Jordan, and Comcac picks up a quick two. Well, Chicago has had a lot of success getting out and running after turnovers, after steal. And Dennis Rodman sensing that pass to Scottie Pippen stepped right in and picked his pocket and finds Hardaway. Now Pippen one on one with Scott. Rebounded by Longley. Longley keeps it alive and then stripped by Scott. Hardaway with Bowie. Hardaway took it all the way. And it's Orlando eight. Chicago 2. And Phil Jackson stoically sitting on the bench, barely watching the action, a little upset with his team, probably warning them for two days that something like this could happen if his ball club wasn't ready. But Michael Jordan showing that he is ready. Michael heading on his first two field goal attempts. Jordan coming off a very quiet game here on uh, Saturday. Also late in the game. Came up with a twisted ankle, but uh, says he's all right. And uh, showing no signs of the ankle problem. O'Neal gets inside, and Rodman able to box out for the rebound. Good defensive job. Oh, yes, Scott almost with another steal. Hopper changed his mind. Jordan with a show-the-ball move on Hardaway. And the Bulls will maintain possession. going it is still Chicago in command off the board that's been the story of this series as well and when you have Dennis Robin on the floor that's going to be the case most of the time Longley goes to the hook shot and the rebound taken by Hardaway Scott for three Dennis Scott who has been struggling has not been able to hit downtown shot but the two-point shot he was two for his previous 13 in the series Orlando up 11-4 offer trying to get out of trouble is called for steps well this is what the Orlando Magic wanted from Dennis Scott from the beginning of the series and something he's done all season long find that three-point line in transition catch and fire and that time he had Scotty Pippen all over him hand in the face and it didn't matter because right now the Magic are playing with such high emotion. You recall they opened up in strong fashion on Saturday but were not able to maintain it. Magic leading here 11-4. Here's Scott to the reverse. And it's Orlando up 13-4. As you say, Phil Jackson just riding it out here in the early moments. Not looking to call for the timeout. Meanwhile, the Bulls continue to have problems. Another turnover as Rodman is called for the traveling violation. Well, one way to get yourself going is to play tough, aggressive defense, which is what Dennis Scott has been doing, and that's why his body is so alive at the offensive end. That the fifth turnover committed by the Bulls, and three have been traveling violations. Stop passing off the three. O'Neal backing his way and hitting. So Shaquille with six points here in the early going, and it's the Magic 15, the Bulls four. Five minutes gone by. And Phil Jackson knows there will be a timeout as soon as we hit the 6.59 mark and under on that dead ball underneath. 
Ron Hopper with his first field goal. The Orlando Magic hoping to bring this series to a fifth game, which would take place in Chicago on Wednesday night. Oh, steal that beautifully by Bowie. Anthony Bowie with the perfect pass for Shaquille O'Neal, who just had some words for Dennis Rodman as they headed up court. They have been sniping at each other right throughout the series. And recall Shaquille referred to Rodman as a gimmick. And Rodman has been saying, well, Shaquille, oh, the block by O'Neal. Fast break for the Magic. Scott for three. And Longley gets to it. Rodman has been saying, well, O'Neal will be a great player someday. Nice move by, by Michael Jordan. He's 3 of 3, has 6 points, and it's the Magic 17, the Bulls 8. And at the other end, Dennis Rodman barking at the official Danny Crawford, saying he was thrown to the floor. The Bulls are still getting their running opportunities as the Magic, and then some of that emotion starting to wear off. A little slow getting back on defense. O'Neal turns it over. And Pippen fouled in the open floor by Scott. A furious start by the Orlando Magic with 549 to go in this first quarter. They are up 17-8. Could be a good sign for the Magic. Dennis Scott hitting on his first attempt from downtown. Two of 13 from a three-point range. Prior to that, only one for seven from downtown in game number three. We asked Dennis his thoughts on the shooting problems. Just one of those things that I guess we as shooters go through when uh, the ball just doesn't want to go in the basket. And then when I finally do get some good looks, which sometimes I guess in this series they've been coming far in between. And I find myself sometimes rushing or getting over anxious that, oh, I finally got a good look and I'm not shooting my normal shot. And, you know, it's something you go through. But the only, only way you get out of it is keep shooting. But I'm trying to guard myself to not taking, you know, bad shots. I start making myself and hurt the team worse and we're already being down 0-3. I don't want to come out and just start jacking up crazy shots and making everything look worse than what it is. Well, throughout the course of the season, Dennis Scott benefited by all the double teaming on Shaquille O'Neal and Penny Hardaway. He would generally get open for those three-point shots. It has not happened in this series. Another alert play by the Magic. They've been swarming defensively here at the start. They lead 17-8. Anthony Bowie blocked. Jordan got a piece of it, but contact right there. And it's Orlando 19, Chicago 8. Uh, even the picks are better for Orlando. Shaquille O'Neal has set a couple of very good ones on pick and rolls. And earlier we saw John Conkak almost level Michael Jordan near midcourt. Illegal defense call for the first time. Let's check in with Ahmad Rashad. Ahmad? All right, Marv, doing that last time out, Phil Jackson very calmly reminding his team that they expected this kind of intensity, the crowd behind him and everything, but said that with their uh, experience, they should be able to weather the storm. A lot of ball game left. They just got to start chipping away at it. Marv? All right, thank you, Ahmad. Ron Hopper helping to chip away at it with a three. Hopper with five points, and it's the Magic by eight, just under five minutes remaining. Well, Ron Harper's shooting has been very poor in this series, but his defense has been exceptional. Shaquille oh, oh, oh. trying the spin move and was shoved by Longley. So, Luke committing his second. Well, most of this series, Shaq has stayed going to the middle against Luke Longley and has a lot of success on the spin to the baseline against Wennington. He figured, I might as well try it on somebody else. And now Phil Jackson's going to come with two coach and go small to try to reverse the momentum of this ballgame. Luke Longley will sit down after collecting his second foul. Substitution for Orlando Donald Royal. Checking in. And John Kotchak hears it from the crowd. It's been a gallant effort by John Konkak, who was a, a question mark for both games three and today's game four because of the knee problem. Kukoc called for the hold, and that is team foul number four on the Bulls. Orlando with three. Well, Penny Hardaway, who has averaged just three assists a game in the three games played so far, already has three today. Hopper off the board. Has it poked away, but a foul reach and call on Royal. Orlando very aggressive defensively showing the passion and the heart 
that they seem to lack in game three. And when you start a game out, Mar, with that kind of aggression, and if you can keep it up for long periods, you'll get the benefit of most calls from the referees. But if you start out sluggishly, not moving your feet, not getting after people, not bumping, and then try to do it later in the game, you will not get the benefit of the calls. Chant of defense from the crowd. Jordan working on Bowie. Shot clock at five, Pippen for three. Well, Scotty Pippen, who was having his difficulties from three-point range, has certainly been able to find the touch at three of four from downtown on Saturday. 1914, Orlando Hardaway, trying to set up for me. Yes, but Shaquille made the recovery. And it's the Magic 21, and the Bulls 14. Shaquille O'Neal with 10 points in this first quarter. Well, Penny Hardaway felt pressure. They got a pressure release. He just drove through everybody. He was going to attack that rim. And finally, the dish off to Shaq. Short. Try to go glass. And he was hacked by Bowie. Well, nothing tentative about the attack at all at either end of the floor for Orlando so far this afternoon. Penny getting into the middle of the lane. Could have been a foul on Rodman as he moved his feet and stepped over and forced the bump. But Shaq able to dig out that loose ball and finish. Michael Jordan, who had difficulty at the foul line in unusual fashion on Saturday, 6 of 11 at the line. Both clubs had problems. Chicago 18 for 31, Orlando 10 of 24. How about the two teams combining, missing the five technical fouls that were attempted? It was a full moon the other day. 21-16, <laughs> Orlando. Three and a half to go in this first quarter. Miscommunication between Bowie and Hardaway. And he felt he was grabbed. It does a wise thing there. Doesn't argue with the official. Something that was a problem for him on Saturday. Bulls with six turnovers. For the Magic, their second. Rodman gets inside. Air ball on the finger roll. Dennis hears it from the crowd. I didn't know where he was on the floor. Never located the rim. Scott. Rebound punched aside by O'Neal and out of bounds. Brooks Thompson getting set to check in. Now being waved on, replacing Anthony Bowie. Brian Hill working with a short bench, although he does have Brian Shaw available, despite the neck problem. He sat out on on Saturday. Oh, this has been the difference in this first quarter. And it's been the other way around in the first three games in this series, but Orlando definitely the most aggressive team on the floor at this moment. Rodman rebounded by Hardaway. Now from Orlando's point of view, although Dennis Rodman has certainly picked it up offensively, they do not mind seeing Rodman take those kind of shots. He'll set the pick. Scott, including Pippen. Scott. Thompson able to keep it alive, and a one and two by Pippen. Well, let fell down. The Magic with the shot clock rolling down. Timeout taken by Chicago. You are watching the NBA on NBC. Welcome back to Orlando. I'm Jim Gray. I'm now joined by Leonard Armato. He is the agent for Shaquille O'Neal. We saw the interview with Shaquille during the pregame show in which he said this is his first option to stay in Orlando. Leonard, there was also some talk about Brian Hill. First, let's ask you about Shaquille O'Neal. Will he stay here in Orlando or go to Los Angeles? Well, first of all, I just want to let Peter Vesey know that the reason I didn't return his call this week because I knew he was going to try to stir up all this controversy. Well, now that he has done that, will Shaq stay? Well, Shaq and I have a pact that during the playoffs, we don't have any discussion substantively about where he'll be next year as he said Orlando is definitely his first choice but you know after the season's over we got to evaluate all of his options now Chuck Daly's name has been mentioned is it more appealing to Shaquille O'Neal to have Chuck Daly here as coach would it be more appealing for him to stay here well, it's difficult to say Chuck Daly is one of the greatest coaches of all time but Brian Hill's doing a great job this quarter <laughs> this quarter what about Brian Hill and his relationship with Shaquille um, you know Shaquille said, and I think it goes for me too, Brian's a coach, Shaquille's the player, and that's the way it stands. Until anything changes, that's the way it stands. 
but you would not be opposed to having another coach specifically Chuck Daly. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that after the season's over, a coach as well as all the other factors will be one of the considerations. Thank you very much, Len. Try to enjoy the game now that you've been grilled. Marv? All right, thank you, uh, Jim. Not that uh, Brian Hill will be uh, concerned with Leonard Armand as see Rich DeVos, the chairman of the Orlando Magic. Not that he'd be concerned with a vote of confidence from Leonard Armando, but that was not exactly a ringing endorsement that Brian is doing a fine job in the first quarter. And by the way, that man, Rich DeVos, one of Brian Hill's biggest supporters and fans. And I'm sure he will have a lot to say with whatever goes on with this organization come the offseason. Two and a half remaining in the first quarter. And the Magic up 22-16. And a foul is called as Kukoc cut to the lane. He was held by Scott. For Dennis Scott, his second. And now Orlando over the limit. So Tony Kukoc, who has been quiet during the course of the playoffs on the line. Kukoc during the regular season just killed the Magic. Tony Kukoc coming back from the lower back injury that put him out of the... Uh, Nick series missed the uh, final three games of that series. Played 20 minutes here on Saturday, hit only one of five from the field. So Chicago has been able to cut into that 11-point deficit. It is now a four-point Orlando lead. Thompson guarded by Kerr, who just came on. Hardaway, very active this first quarter. Hardaway already with four assists. He had just three and 46 minutes in game three. We have not seen him posting up a lot in this series, something he does a lot against every other team, but Pippen a little taller, he's been a little reluctant to do it. Now Dennis Scott is guarding Michael George, who shoots over him and hits from downtown. Jordan is four for four. He has 11. It's the Magic 24, the Bulls 11. Well, there's no question Orlando coming out, giving the Bulls their best shot. The thing that has to worry them, the Bulls are taking it and right in this ballgame. Hardaway checking the clock as he backs his way. Now looking for a foul. Kerr. Now on the floor, along with George, Pippen, Kukos, and Bushler. Michael George makes it five for five. He has 13 points, and he's brought the Bulls within one. Well, very difficult matchup on the floor for Orlando right now. Dennis Scott can run around with Scottie Pippen pretty much the same height. Michael George is too quick for him. 15-5 run by Chicago. The Magic and Penny Hardaway in particular know if they can get to the basket, nobody to block a shot. And Pippen takes it the distance and draws the foul, and he went flying. Well, Michael Jordan is feeling it, and it looks like he wants the ball in every offensive situation. Isolated against Dennis Scott here, just putting the ball on the floor, a little pump fake, getting him off balance to knock down the shot. And then Penny Hardaway working one-on-one -on -one against Scottie Pippen, beats him with the nice spin move and nobody home underneath the basket and Pippen wanting to bounce back just making sure he draws some kind of contact as he gets to the basket and his free throw shooting woes continue foul called on Royal and here is Brandy Brown providing a respite for Michael Jordan Brandy Brown the solid defensive player in his fifth season out of New Mexico State so we were talking at the start that although Michael has not been dominant offensively in this series, the ball will go back to Orlando. You always have the feeling that he is lurking out there, more than lurking in this first quarter. 13 points on five of five shooting. Three point Orlando lead. Out of 15 seconds with eight on the shot clock remaining in the first quarter. Hardaway for three. Yes. six-point lead. Here's Kukoc for three. Oh, the foul is called. 
with two and two ten seconds to go in the first quarter as Hardaway and Pippen got involved in the collision and it's called on Pippen for Scotty, his second personal. And a frustration foul on the part of Pippen here as Kukoc set up by Pippen on that drive and dish out and Pippen upset that he got beat on that spin move and looked bad defensively on that earlier play by Hardaway. Then he took Hardaway's left hand move away in the lane, gave him the three pointer which Hardaway nailed and then Pippen actually wanted to go to the basket himself, felt Kukoc was in his way and had to chase him out to the left corner. It's been an outstanding first quarter for Penny Hardaway. He has hit five of eight from the field. He has 12 points, along with the four assists. Anthony Bowie is back. Michael Jordan has returned for the final two seconds of the quarter. Big scoring outburst for the Magic in seven of the 12 quarters coming into this game. Orlando held up 20 points and under. Kukoc pops it down. And Bowie and Thompson able to keep it away from Jordan. 7-0 run by the Magic to end the first. And they're hearing it from this crowd. Michael Jordan with a perfect first quarter. 13 points in all. Strong effort by Shaquille O'Neal and Penny Hardaway. After one, it's the Magic 31. The Bulls 23. You're watching the NBA on NBC. You're watching the NBA on NBC. The 1996 NBA Playoffs. Penny Hardaway, the key to the success of the Magic in this first quarter. During the regular season, he averaged seven assists, just under three turnovers per game. And you can see in this series, over the first three, it has not been the usual Hardaway output, but today, Four assists in the first quarter has not turned it over. In fact, uh, his number's deceiving because he had opened up with a 38-point uh, in the blowout, a 38-point game in game number one in Chicago. Today, five of eight, 13 points, two of two from the line. In fact, Orlando with 31 points, that's uh, the most they've scored in a quarter this series. Well, the responsibility of a great player is to make your teammates better. And he has all of that ability. He can do it himself. He can get others involved. But with the starting lineup of the Magic, the normal one, when Nick Anderson is there, you've got five very good players, very talented, who all like to touch and have the basketball and like to get their shots. When you have more of a role player in there in your lineup, now Hardaway can do some different things. He can take more responsibility as far as scoring himself and still get the ball to the key people. Well, you know, Phil Jackson likes this matchup. He has Tony Kukoc being guarded by Anthony Bowie, and off the head fake, uh, Kukoc threw the foul on Bowie. That's his second. Well, the Magic with only 67 points in game three. Bushler having trouble. Got it in, and nearly stolen by Royal. 31 in the first quarter, following the 67 for the entire game on Saturday. Chicago not anticipating all this pressure defense from Orlando. They're making some lazy passes. Shot clock at five. Jordan posting up Bowie. And continues the superb shooting. Six for six from the field. He has 15 uh, Michael, points. Uh, excuse me. Michael saw the double team coming and quickly spun to the baseline for what has now become his patented fadeaway jump shot. Magic 31, Bulls 25. Scott was about to load it up, but a illegal defense call on Chicago. That is the first call against the Bulls. A Michael Jordan catching out of the corner of his eyes. The move by Donald Royal to come double knew that he could take that quick, hard step and explode into the air and shoot over the smaller buoy. Ottaway had scored the last nine points for the Orlando Magic. Foul is called as Royal took the push. The foul on number 23, Michael Jordan. Foul on Jordan. That is his first. I said the smaller Bowie, actually, Anthony Bowie and Michael Jordan, about the same height, 6'5 or so. But when Michael gets into the air, he all of a sudden becomes taller, much taller than Anthony Bowie. Thompson, played by Kerr. Shaquille has certainly had his way in the first half against Dennis Rodman, who in this series has done a terrific job. Not only
really on the court physically, but you get the idea he has gotten into the head of, of Shaquille O'Neal. That foul, though, is a call on Tony Cook, though. Well, because there is so little double teaming of Shaq, these defenders have to play him straight up. Normally, you would shade towards the middle because that's where the double team is coming. Shaq now three for three from the line. And I think that's why Shaquille is getting that little opening on the baseline and really making a good, quick, hard move with terrific footwork to the baseline throughout this series. Over the first three games, Shaq 6 of 24 at the foul line. And he's followed up the 1 for 9 on Saturday with a 4 for 4 thus far. 33-25 Orlando. We are early in the second quarter. Marv Albert with Matt Dukas, Ahmad Rashad, and Jim Gray from the arena. They double up on Jordan. And Michael in a crowd got blocked. It is on O'Neal. That's his first. Uh, such a smart play by Michael Jordan. You can just tell in his body language he feels the Magic are getting the benefit of a lot of calls. He was just going to drive into a white shirt and see if he couldn't get a call. He didn't like that last call against him. Almost a makeup call. In fact, a makeup call. Who coach? Nice touch by Tony Kukoc. That is his first field goal. 33-27, Orlando. Magic have led right throughout. They have done it with pressure defense here in the first half. Scott with the save. And back comes Kukoc. Setting up Bushler for three. Yes. John Bushler has done a terrific job game in and game out coming off the bench. Does not get many minutes, but he has certainly made the most of it when he's been on the court. Well, Steve Kerr actually out paddled Shaquille O'Neal and knocked that ball loose. He almost got his body knocked hard to the floor. Three-point magic lead. Here is Thompson for three. Brooks Thompson, a three-point shooting specialist in a second year out of Oklahoma State. Extends to a six-point Orlando advantage. Kuko for three. And he continues to struggle from downtown. He is now two of 33 from three-point range. We'll be right back. The NBA on NBC is brought to you by the Pepsi-Cola Company. Now, the more Pepsi you drink, the more great stuff you're going to get by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. And by Nike, who encourages you to participate in the lives of America's youth. Well, during the course of this uh, series, there's been much verbal sniping between Dennis Rodman and Shaquille O'Neal. Rodman has certainly done an effective job defending against Shaquille. We asked Shaq about the matchup. I think Dennis knows that, he, that he can't play me one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, the rules is one arm, an arm has to be halfway. I mean, he puts two hands in the back and a knee in the crotch, and he still can't hold me. So, I mean, but this is not a Dennis Rodman Shaq thing. And I'm gonna just go out and play my game. And I only speak when I'm spoken to. And I'm gonna just go out and play. Well, nobody can really hold Shaq, but Dennis Rodman is averaging 16 rebounds a game so far in this series and an unexpected 12 points a game so far shut out from the field. Magic 36, and the ball's 30 with three minutes gone by in the second quarter. Beautiful move by Shaquille O'Neal. He now has 14 points, and it's Orlando by eight. Luke Longley has returned. Longley with Pippen and Rodman up front. Jordan and Kerr in the backcourt. Luke Longley playing with the two fouls. Only oh, surprised Rodman. Longley trapped, had nowhere to go, and then looked to give it up. Well, Shaq has had so much success with the spin to the baseline. Now looks like the defenders are taking that away. Nice little shoulder fake to get Longley to bite on the baseline side. And Shaq, who has really developed that little jump hook in the lane very nicely. Again, O'Neal going at Longley. Oil kept it alive, but Rodman on the recovery. Scott defending on Jordan who goes around him and then took a hard hit. 
Shaquille O'Neal got him with the hip. Foul number three, Dennis Scott. Foul though called on Scott. Third, third, got him first, foul. and that's three on Dennis, Dennis Scott. Well, this is the mode that Michael gets into when he senses his team is struggling and in trouble. He's not going to just rely on the jump shot all the time. He's just going to put that head down, try to draw some contact, and get to the foul line and get other people in foul trouble. Now Jordan guarded by Hardaway. Looking to shake him off. Pippen for three. Jordan with the rebound. Michael Jordan. Seven for seven from the field. He has 17 points. Now, three years ago against the New York Knicks on Memorial Day, Michael Jordan with a 54-point performance. He has 17, and we're early second quarter. Thompson. Longley with the rebound. Stolen by O'Neal. And Luke Longley having a very difficult time out there. That is his fifth turnover. Well, Luke was in a hurry to try to outlet, thinking the Bulls had a fast break opportunity and forgot to protect the basketball. Jack the steal. Well, Hopper did not like uh, the hands of Thompson on him. Hopper from downtown. Jordan with the offensive ball. Longley, Luke Longley with the open shot, his first field goal, and it's a 40-34 Orlando lead. I don't know if you can sense the look or see the look on the face of Michael Jordan as Penny Hardaway is challenging him with his defense. Michael loves that kind of thing, but so far Penny has done a pretty good job on it. Joe Wolf getting set to check in for the first time. A timeout has been called with 6.44 remaining in the first half. It's the Magic with a six-point lead. The steal by Shaq for two of his 16 points. And at the other end, it's Jordan for Longley for his first field goal. We'll be right back. It is Orlando by 6, 6.44 to go in this first half. A reminder, tomorrow NBA playoff action will move to prime time, 9 p.m. Eastern, Sean Kemp. And the Sonics going up against Carmelo in the Jazz Game 5 of the Western Conference Finals. Terrific game yesterday. Seattle able to hold on for the win, and they are up uh, three games to one. Sonics and Jazz tomorrow, 9 o'clock Eastern, right here on NBC. Saw the impressive stat line of Michael Jordan, who has been perfect. And Penny Hardaway holding up the, his own with six of nine, 15 points. And Hugh Hollins with the, the call away from the ball. Foul on Wolf, who just checked in. That is his first. Well, there, Michael not needing as much scoring throughout this game. For game one was a blowout. He just kind of stood around and uh, occasionally chipped in when he had to. He had to turn it on in that third quarter of game two. Here is Jordan Rodman with the putback. So, Michael with his first miss. A oh, good call coming out of that last timeout. A post up for Penny Hardaway. Sometimes the Magic fall into that trap of thinking they have the mismatch, and they do with Shaquille O'Neal, but that gets other people standing around. A different look to, to Penny from time to time could get other people involved. Besides, Penny's very effective. Michael, once again, every time he gets the opportunity, wants to drop that head and drive to the basket. This time he avoided the contact, unable to finish that shot, but Dennis Rodman, who's been quiet on the boards, finally got in there. Illegal defense, second call against the Bulls, and uh, Hardaway not able to hit, and so the, uh, the technical foul jinx that struck on Saturday continues here this afternoon. Michael Jordan hitting his first seven shots before that miss. The all-time NBA playoff record best shooting percentage in a single game. Scott Whitman, 11 for 11. Did it for the Celtics against the Lakers back in May of 85. Also did it on Memorial Day, we're told. And the foul is called. Absolutely not. That's the one that can get him into trouble. Foolish foul there because Dennis is going to be involved a lot down low with Shaq where he's going to have to take some fouls. Trying to pressure Joe Wolf on the perimeter. Unnecessary. Hardaway from three. O'Neal. Oh, Shaquille. Unstoppable in this first half. 44-36. 
six. The Magic by eight. Hopper on the penetration. Rodman with the rebound. And a loose ball foul called on the Magic. Well, this is why you do not have to go into Shaq in the post every time because he gets other ways to score. When he is off the ball, involved in pick and rolls or just on the weak side, just go in there and get some second shot opportunities. And at the other end of the floor, instead of challenging that shot, Shaquille O'Neal got all tangled up with Dennis Rodman and called for the elbow in the throat. So Shaquille with two fouls. Dennis Rodman during the regular season, just a 52% free throw shooter. Offer sitting down. Kerr and Jordan in the backcourt with Longley, Rodman, and Pippen up front. We're coming up on five minutes to go in the first half. The Orlando Magic trying to stay alive with his best of seven, leading by seven points. They have led all the way. They've led by as many as 11. Kerr putting the pressure on Thompson. Kerr with the steal and called for time. It should be noted, made by Hugh Hollins, who has not been a favorite official in recent years of the Chicago Bulls. A much better pressure on the part of the Chicago Bulls. Steve Kerr all over Brooks Thompson. Hardaway being battled by Pippen inside. And a terrific dive by Steve Kerr to get the timeout. They've been able to call this timeout because both players had possession or tied up and had four hands on the basketball. Nevertheless, Kerr got the call. He was shouting it, I think, as he dove to the floor, asking for that timeout. Now Kerr being defended tightly by Thompson. Scotty Pippen has been quiet, only one of five from the field. Jordan with the step. And rebounded by O'Neal. Shaq with 18. Michael Jordan, oh, that's a backcourt violation. Brooks Thompson, who had some shaky moments handling the ball in game three, turns it over right there. And he was surprised by Penny throwing him the ball in that situation. Penny Hardaway, the primary ball handler right now. Brooks Thompson occasionally plays some point guard, but with Hardaway bringing it out of the backcourt, his responsibility to get it into the front court. Four and a half remaining in the first half. Jordan trying to shovel it. Luke Longley is really having his problems at both ends of the floor. No surprise, Bill Weddington hasn't gotten the call. Bill Jackson just went down and got him. Yes, Bill Weddington making his way to the scorer's table. And a push is called. It's on the balls. That's three on Longley, and he will sit down. Here comes Weddington. And Bill really struggles with the uh, strength in the strength department trying to keep Shaq from moving either into the middle or the spin baseline. But what Bill can do for the other end is spread the floor a little bit, run some pick and pops, and he's effective with that 16-foot jump shot. Here's Donald Royal. That's that quick first step. Magic 46. The Bulls. 37. Well, Penny Hardaway forced to the baseline there, but Donald Royal doing the smart thing, not standing around, looking for a lane to cut into, and he was the benefit of an easy two. He mentioned the spreading the floor that Bill Wennington provides, but he was not able to hit that open jump shot. Thompson. Yes. That's why Brooks Thompson is on the floor, particularly with the Magic short-handed. In fact, we're told that Brian Shaw, who was supposed to play, after sitting out with a neck injury in game three, will not be able to play. On the bench, but uh, unable to perform, we're told. Rodman with the offensive rebound. Well, apparently the, uh, the muscle spasms in the neck got worse. Jordan was fouled. Foul committed by Hardaway, his first. And a late whistle there as Michael was forced to the baseline side. And the whole Magic crowd reacting, obviously. A little shove there by Penny Hardaway as Jordan fell down, but it was a late whistle, and that's why the crowd is reacting, Shaquille reacting, and then Penny Hardaway, for the most part, 
has not been griping with the officials as he did in game two, but he started to do right there, and the veteran Anthony Bowie coming over to get into Penny's ear, say, hey, leave the referees alone, just keep playing your game. We need you out of your play, not barking at the referees. Orlando with that foul going over the limit. Tony Kukoc back on the floor, replacing Steve Kerr, who did not score. He'll try to save it and step down. And <laughs> gets a, uh, again, a very sincere pat from Dennis Rodman. Well, Shaq actually took his eye off the ball here and, and missed it completely, bouncing off his chest and trying to save it and throwing it as hard as he could off Dennis Rodman. I'm sure if he had the opportunity again, he'd throw it even higher if he could. Orlando by 10. Just under three left, first half. Pippen got inside. Nice fake by Scotty Pippen. It's only his second field goal. Ryan Hill has O'Neal up front now, along with Wolf and Royal, with Bowie and Hardaway at the guard. Hardaway guarded by Pippen. Hardaway with a change of pace, dribble, and then forces it up. Coach met by Royal. Weddington for Rodman. Now Weddington will shoot him. Air ball handled by Royal. Bad pass. Bowie able to save it. Now Bill Weddington looking very tentative, passing it up an open shot and forcing a bad one. Air ball. Royal draws the foul. Donald Royal who can take it to the basket extremely effectively with that first step. And when he's getting the playing time, spends much time at the foul line. He's a slashing style player. Here's the driving move by Donald Royal in his seventh NBA season out of Notre Dame. Originally a third-round draft pick of, of Cleveland. Spent some time in the CBA. Played over in Israel. Back to the NBA with San Antonio. This is fourth year with the Magic. Well, last year, Donald had been a starter for much of the year and then injured his ankle in the late in the playoffs and lost that starting spot to uh, Dennis Scott and kind of lost confidence in himself. Coaching staff losing confidence in him. Brian Shaw not available now. He's saying he is, he is done for the game. But Donald Royal may not be a perimeter threat, but he is certainly a threat to get to the foul because he can take the ball so hard to the hole. Magic up 50-40. Two minutes remaining in the first half. with uh, several members of the Orlando Magic. This one was brewing right below. Oh, that Dennis has been starting now. He's milling around, got into a little verbal altercation with Brian Hill, and they continue to jaw at one another. As there's been some hard hitting there, the shove by Shaquille O'Neal and Brian Hill walking out towards Dennis Rodman. Richie Adubato protecting Brian. <laughs> How good that's going to be right now, but so this, when you're a teammate of Dennis Rodman or a Chicago fan, this is what you always worry about with Dennis Rodman, the, the fireworks starting, and you just don't know what's going to go off. Double technical called on Rodman and O'Neal. O'Neal, who was fouled, Ryan drives the first home. He's 5 of 5 at the line. Well, Shaq hit him one, two, three hard times, and Dennis Rodman just trying to grab onto Shaq and maybe instigate a little bit with the grab, and he did what he, he wanted to do. He got Shaq to react with a push. So difficult. 
difficult to figure out. Shaquille O'Neal's inconsistent free throw shooting. A loose ball foul is called. Joe Wolf battling for the rebound picks up his second. Both teams are over the foul limit. So the Bulls to the line. I thought you were going to say so difficult to figure out Dennis Rodman. <laughs> that there is an understatement. But the Dennis senses that his team right now is a little bit lethargic. They kind of weathered the storm uh, for much of the first quarter when the Magic came out and played with a great deal of emotion. Now I think he senses his team going backwards. He's trying to do something to uh, to get them fired up and, uh, of course, get himself fired up. He's going to go to the bench for a rest right now. Well, this has sparked up the Orlando team in this first half, in particular, right at the start, an Orlando team playing without Nick Anderson, who uh, suffered the, the wrist injury late in game three. Brian Shaw dressed and uh, on the bench. It was thought he'd be able to play after sitting out on Saturday with the uh, muscle spasms in his neck. Now he is out. John Komkak playing with a uh, hobbled knee. He started the game, but uh, has not played much today. Off the steal, here comes Bushler. Of course, Horace Grant is out with the elbow problem. By Sally, who just checked in. And a loose ball foul on Bushler. And things getting very rough under the board. And the last offensive sequence for the Orlando Magic. Bowie catching the ball deep in the left corner, looking for that lob play to Shaquille O'Neal. John Sally did a terrific defensive job of just bumping Shaquille off enough, and then the weak side defense by Judd Bushler to come up with the steal. And then Sally had a little easy layup, but he just squeezed it out of his hand. Joe Wolf, very popular player here in Orlando, hearing the Wolf cry from the crowd in his ninth season out of North Carolina. For one year, he was a teammate of Michael Jordan with the uh, Tar Heels. During the regular season, started eight games at uh, the power forward position. Comcac is back, and Shaquille O'Neal hears it from the crowd. Seven of nine from the field, 19 points for Shaq. Had to be a last uh, two games, a difficult situation for, for Joe Wolf. I'm sure driving to the arena, expecting to start both ball games because John Comcac's availability unknown with that sore knee, and, and Joe Wolf not starting either. And I think it's, it looks like it's affecting him mentally right now. He has a very quizzical look on his face, but. He has been coming off the bench all year long for, for uh, the Orlando Magic and making a nice contribution. Matt measuring the quizzical look on the face of Joe Wolf. He looks like that all the time, huh? Even more. Just very, very pensive. Shot clock at five. Bushler for three. Yes. Bushler, two of two from downtown. And it's the Magic by eight points with 40 seconds remaining in the half. Hardaway checking the clock as he resets. Shot clock at seven. Wolf. Oh, Joe Wolf got it away with the shot clock rolling down. It's a three-pointer for Wolf. And it's the Magic by 11. Bulls holding for a final shot of the half. Down to 10 seconds. Facing the double team, finding Pippen, and Pippen is fouled. Foul committed by Donald Royal with nine tenths of a second remaining in the half. Well, Joe Wolf has that nice 16 to 18 foot jump shot and has shot it well all year. Not known as a three point shooter, but he had to rush this one with just one se second on the shot clock with Scotty Pippen right in his face. Pippen to the line. He is 0 for 2 at the line. And Pippen and Royal having some words. So Scotty felt that the Donald Royal put a little extra into that as Donald Royal was actually faked out of his shoes trying to grab on and make sure Pippen did not lay that ball up. But a good defensive job by Bowie. Timing his double team just right coming out. Of, turned out to be not right because they got a, a free throw shooting opportunity. But coming out to double team Jordan make him give up the ball. Thompson comes on for contact. 
Dick Rivera indicating a 22nd timeout call by Orlando. Nine tenths of a second remaining in this first half. The Chicago Bulls with a 3 0 lead in this best of seven Eastern Conference final. A look back at uh, game one, Chicago in a blowout in Chicago. Dennis Rodman, 13 points, 21 rebounds. Uh, Penny Hardaway with the 38 uh, point game as uh, the Bulls just crunched the magic off the boards. Game number two. Chicago came from behind. Shaquille O'Neal had the big first half, 26 of his 36 in the first half, but sparked by Michael Jordan with 17 of, of his 35 in the, the third. Bulls came back from an 18-point deficit, and then here Saturday in game number three, Chicago with the 86-67 uh, destruction of Orlando as Scottie Pippen broke out with 27 points on 11 of the 14 from the field. So 67 points for the Magic on Saturday here in the first half. They have already scored 56. It is 56-47. Hardaway, can he get it off? He does. And that is the end of the first half. Shaquille O'Neal with 19. Penny Hardaway with 15. That man, Michael Jordan, with 20 points on seven of nine from the field. Bob Costas and the Prudential Halftime Report coming up. Coach, the start of the second half. Remember, Orlando led by 15 at halftime in game two in Chicago. Jordan, the only bull in double figures with 20. 19 for O'Neal and 15 for Hardaway. Before the second half gets underway, let's go to Ahmad Rashad. All right, thanks, Mar. Phil Jackson telling his team that the problem was they're not running their offense. Also, way too many turnovers. Did they had 10 in the first half, and they can hold it down to five, they'd be okay. Also, the problem with Penny Hardaway, let him get too deep in the blocks. They want to try to keep him away from the basket more and not give him any easy baskets. And in the words of Randy Brown, who told me Phil Jackson basically told them to get their butts in here. All right, let's go down to Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Ahmad. I spoke with Brian Hill. He was very pleased with the first half, said it was the best half that he felt they had played in this entire series. Liked the way that they protected the ball, and he liked the tempo of the game. He said, we're going to continue to run, and we'll continue to protect the ball. Marv? All right, Jim. Penny Hardaway leading the way with six assists in that first half, 12 assists for Orlando, and that uh, a positive stat. Brian Hill uh, checks over the uh, first half rundown. Here's Michael Jordan. Robin able to get it to Jordan. Scotty Pippen only two for seven from the field in the first half, facing a double team. And last touch by Hopper first possession for the Chicago Bulls but I think Michael Jordan knows as well as the rest of the Chicago Bulls he can't be the only one scoring he's going to have to get some other players involved and normally Scotty Pippen is the guy that has to pick it up first of all by scoring himself and then making some plays for others Anthony Bowie starting for the injured Nick Anderson here's Bowie and Rodman with the rebound Finding Harper with Konkak back. So John Konkak collecting his third foul. Oh, Terrific oh, outlet oh, pass oh, by Dennis Rodman oh, to send Ron Harper towards the basket. But as he looked up, he saw number 45, John Konkak, standing there in Saturday afternoon's game. Early in the game, Ron Harper had a similar type of play at the other end of the floor. And John Konkak hammered him hard and picked up a uh, flagrant foul. For a 70% free throw shooter during the regular season. That is his sixth point. And it's the Magic 56 and the Bulls 48. We'll see how hard the Bulls pick up the Magic in the backcourt after this free throw situation. It's tough to do it after a missed one, but it's usually what they like to do in the third quarter. Put that pressure on, create some turnovers, and turn them into easy baskets. O'Neal with Scott and Comcac on the front line. Bowie and Hardaway in the backcourt. And Bowie lost it to Hopper. Two on one. Pippen with Jordan. Oh, Michael Jordan from Scotty Pippen. And 
Pippen got away with a grab and hold on Anthony Hardaway after he made that pass. Uh, pass. He grabbed onto Hardaway so he couldn't attempt to foul or block the shot of Jordan. He got away with it. The Magic lead is down to six. A minute and a half gone by in the third. Nice move by O'Neal. The spin leading to the stop. 21 for Shaq. It's Orlando by eight. The Orlando Magic looking to stay alive. Seeking a fifth game back in Chicago on Wednesday night. And we'll be there if there is a game five on, on Wednesday. Illegal defense against Orlando, their second violation. A good ball pressure on the part of Ron Harper as Anthony Bowie did not protect the ball. And then that little grab with the left hand of Pippen to hold Hardaway. And uh, right now, Shaquille O'Neal, he has it going to the middle. He has the spin move. And Luke Longley has three personal fouls. But the way that he is playing at the offensive end, I don't know how important a player is going to be for Chicago. Of their turn, 10 turnovers, he's got five of them. Michael Jordan breaks the string of missed technical fouls. That's a streak ends at six. Combined by both clubs. The Magic 58 and the Bulls 51. Chicago Bulls on the other hand looking for a four game sweep. And that would uh, like uh, the rest period awaiting the winner between Seattle and Utah. Jordan, Michael getting the roll. 25 for Jordan and a five-point Orlando lead. Well, the Bulls will take the basket, but they cannot be happy with the way that they're executing their offense. Too much standing around. They look a little heavy-legged to start this third quarter. Here's Scott going glass. And a Scott has seven. And it is Orlando by seven. Hopper got the step and was hit by Hardaway. The Magic slow in getting back down court. Well, the ball just being swung around the perimeter. Finally, it goes into the hands of Michael Jordan with the shot clock winding down, having to just take a jump shot over uh, Anthony Bowie. And then Dennis Scott leaning in as he's been taken off that three-point line time and time again by the Chicago defense, forcing him to put the ball on the floor. You hear the chant of defense from the crowd as... Scotty Pippen teed it up, but passed on the three. Hopper for three. Bowie knocking it out of the hands of Rodman. And the Bulls will get a new 24. Well, the Bulls say they want to take that shot, and it is an open one from Ron Harper as they swing the ball, as Phil Jackson calling that play. Because when you expect your teammates to take a shot, and that's why Dennis Rodman is such a good offensive rebounder. He times it so well. He knows when the shot's going to get up, and he gets good position. Three. And Pippen able to get to it. Well, Scotty Pippen has been off. He is now two of eight. Orlando in possession up by seven. Rodman had it batted away by Bowie. But Anthony Bowie, very active on the boards. He's been uh, contesting for every loose ball, every rebound at, at both ends, and that's been a factor. Well, the Chicago Bulls are having to settle for jump shots out of their offense, and that's what the triangle offense will present to you a lot of times, but they still have to get some slashes and drives to the basket to be effective. Longley setting the screen. Jordan trying to slice his way and had it on the side. It will be Chicago ball with four the shot clock. It's amazing how the ball winds up in the hands of Michael Jordan or Scottie Pippen with that shot clock winding down, but they do have the ability to create, make something happen. No complaint by Michael there. Good block by Shaq. Pippen can't find anyone. Just did. Avoid the five-second violation. Now Pippen with a shot clock running down. It's a 24-second violation. Twelfth turnover for the ball. Well, when you don't set good hard screens on underneath out of bounds play and come off hard, you're going to get yourself in that situation and you have to expect it with just four seconds on the shot clock. The Bulls so far kind of sleepwalking into this second half. Well, we talked about this possibility yesterday with Phil Jackson asking was there fear of a letdown and he said yes there was. Bowie on the drive. That's his first field goal. 
and the magic is open up a nine point lead. Not only a question of a letdown, but uh, Orlando is playing a, a different brand of basketball here this afternoon. Longley. Luke Longley. Luke Longley with the short hook to cut it to a, a seven point magic lead. This is where the Magic try to overload that one side of the floor. Bowie likes to throw the alley-oop lob. Doesn't get an opportunity here. There's the hard spin again. Yes, and it counts. And Shaquille O'Neal has been unstoppable with that move. The head fake, the spin, and the stuff. Drawing the foul on Longley for Longley, his fourth. Well, Shaq just uses Luke Longley as a post. He just leans into him, and that freezes his body, and then Shaq is really able to go either way, and he's been very effective going to that baseline, and James Edwards will get a look, as Luke Longley did finally get a field goal on the last Bulls possession, but he has had his problems here this afternoon. Hardaway able to tear it away from Rodman on the offensive board, and a foul is called. committed by Dennis Rodman. That is his third. Well, you expect to miss from Shaq on free throws no matter how well he's shooting it. Dennis Rodman failed to block out Penny Hardaway. Hardaway had it put away by Pippen. Pass break three on one. Cut by Pippen. Jordan Quickly, but a good job of Bowie getting back, trying to hold the Ford underneath the basket, and a good job of Shaq getting back in transition. Here's the strip by Pippen to send this fast break going, getting the ball to Pippen in the middle, and Shaq hustling back to stop the lay-in. 6.56 to go in the third. The Magic by nine. Putting you comfortably in command by 1-800-COLLECT. It's the way to call collect. And by new Miller Beer. The brand new beer from Miller with big flavor that goes down easy. Well, a slice of life in the Magic Kingdom as we welcome you back. Marv Albert with Matt Gukas, Bob Rashad, and, and Jim Gray. Just under seven minutes to go in the third quarter. And the Magic leading the ball 64-55. A performance... In uh, contrast to what took place here on uh, Saturday, Orlando shooting 60% for the game on 24 of 40. Orlando, the first three games of the series, shooting 43%. So they have they picked it up, but uh, they've done it at both ends, Matt, because uh, the defense also has uh, been a, a sparked up effort here this afternoon. Well, that's generally what will happen. If you get yourself moving around defensively and aggressive, and then do a good job on the boards, although they've given up 11 offensive rebounds to Chicago, but not, not gotten hurt that much by second-chance points. Michael Jordan already with 26 in this game, but still getting very little help offensively from his teammates. Still no one else in double figures. Jordan with 27, and not getting the help. Pippen is a 2 of 8 from the field. Only seven points. Hopper with six. Longley with four. Kukos with four. Bushler has six on a couple of three-pointers. O'Neal, this time doing it against James Edwards. 66-57, Orlando. Well, James is sitting on that bench for a long time now over the last three games, saying he's not going to beat me baseline anyway. Gave him the middle. Jordan hits the three. That is his second from downtown, and he now has 30. The Magic, 66. The ball, 60. You see Scotty Pippen that time ushering Penny Hardaway up the right side of the floor, knowing that Shaq loves to set up on the left side. At least trying to make him kill some clock. And a holding foul. Call made by Hugh Hollins, the outside official, on James Edwards. Uh, James Edwards is not in there for his defense, so he might as well take a hack in there when Shaq is ready to shoot the ball. He's in there to make a couple of turnaround jumpers. Nice little brush screen by Ron Harper as uh, Anthony Bowie tried to go over the top there. Michael Jordan getting a good look at a three. Now three team fouls apiece. Joe Wolf is back. 
replacing John Conkat. Steve Kerr has checked in. It has been all Michael Jordan for the Bulls. He has accounted for 10 of Chicago's 13 points in the third quarter. Hardaway with the fake, and then picked up on the switch. Scott for three. And Rockman with his ninth rebound. Firing down. That's Pippen and Scotty Pippen going all the way. And the Bulls are within four. And Rodman, after that rebound, looked to the crowd, put a fist in the air. He knew he threw a bullet right into the hands of Pippen. An excellent outlet pass by Dennis Rodman. Scott protecting the dribble on Jordan and for the foul. Jordan looking for the steal and is hit with his third foul. Now, this is the kind of pressure that Chicago will put on you in the third quarter. Just a little bit of a smile there by Michael looking at you, Holland, saying, hey, if you're not going to let me do what I normally do, we'll never get any steal. And again, a foul is called. Bulls have done a good job defensively on Penny Hardaway. Pippen called for that foul as third. Well, in the history of some great outlet passers, Wes Unsell comes to mind, who used to be able to make that in the air sometime. Grab that. Well, he didn't stay in the air that long, but Wes right. would take it and rifle that two-hander the length of the floor. Dennis Rodman right there. Bill Lambert are very good at that kind of type of outlet pass as well. So Dennis Rodman saw a lot of that from Bill throughout his uh, career in Detroit. Bulls are now over the foul limit. Hardaway taking advantage. 17 points and it's the magic 68 the Bulls 62 as we approach five minutes left in the third Robin at the high post now shot clock at seven Jordan operating against Bowie yes and it counts a foul on Bowie and Jordan heads back to the line Michael Jordan single-handedly bringing the Bulls back. With the shot clock winding down, how many times have we said that? Michael in the post has felt very comfortable in his ability to spin away from Anthony Bowie going up for that jump shot. Michael sees that double team coming from the weak side, Joe Wolf. Three-point play by Jordan. Here's the trap by the Bulls. Jordan has 33 points. Orlando lead is down to three. Bowie with the open shot. Yes. Anthony Bowie with a second field goal. Five-point lead for the Magic. The pressure. Last touch by Chicago. attack on the part of the ball. Well, in the penalty, and uh, James Edwards would rather do that and see if Shaq can't make something from the free throw line. He's been so effective in the post as the Bulls continue to force the ball up the right side of the floor, and for some reason, Shaq very rarely posting up on the right side. It's really not that he can't do it. He prefers the left side, but he's pretty effective with a little jump hook on the right side as well. Well, Shaquille hit his first five. He's missed his last three at the line. On a royal back, placing Joe Wolf. Now the Bulls going small, bringing two coach in for Edwards and Brian Hill countering, bringing Donald Royal into the ball game, who was very effective in the first half with his ability to drive the ball to the basket. O'Neal now six of nine from the line. The Magic leading by six. Four minutes to go in the third.
Magic 73, the ball 65, and Phil Jackson calls the time. Anthony Bowie in his seventh NBA season out of Oklahoma has been one of the sparks this afternoon for the Orlando Magic. They didn't score in 15 minutes in the first half, but three huge field goals for the Magic here in this third quarter using his foot speed to get a little seam and a little daylight to get by Tony Kukoc. Now Anthony Bowie is having his hands full at the other end with Michael Jordan who is 11 for 17 from the field. And the tough part about it for Anthony is that Michael is 9 for 10 from the line. You do, cannot put Michael Jordan on the free throw line at double figure amount, except when his, other, his teammates are not getting involved on, offensively. Oh, he's starting for the injured Nick Anderson. Now Hardaway is defending on Jordan. Pippen. Well, Scotty Pippen said he felt he was in the rhythm early in game three. He has not been able to find the rhythm here to this point. But that uh, bucket cuts it to a six-point Orlando lead as we come up on three minutes to go in the third quarter. Now Bowie being guarded by Kerr. Hardaway with five on the shot clock. Out of three. Out of one. That's a 24-second violation. 24-second violation. Now Penny Hardaway in the post, who's usually very effective in either making his own play if he's single covered, but he spotted Tony Kukoc coming over to double team, and, and they gave the ball up too quickly, and it enabled Kukoc to just hang in the lane and they get back, and that's why the Magic did not get a good look at a shot. You almost have to wait for that double team to get a little bit closer to get the defense out of whack. trying to uh, check in. Looks like the substitution has been waved off by, by Dick Pavetta. He's told to take a seat. And the reason for that in the uh, judgment of the officials, and in particular Dick Pavetta, that uh, Brooks Thompson had not been in that little box at midcourt where you have to be when the uh, whistle is blown on the infraction. He is in there now in his catcher's position. I believe he called for the curve. He did, he did. The Magic 73, the ball 67. Michael Jordan with 13 of his game-high 33 here in the third quarter. As Jordan tried to slice his way, he is called for a traveling violation. A little shuffle of the feet, but I think why Dick Pavetta called it is he felt that Michael Jordan put the ball down with two hands. Let's see if he does as he gets inside. No, he put it down one hand, and I don't think he shuffled his feet. That's the third turnover committed by Jordan, second on a traveling violation. Now Thompson played very tightly by Kerr. O'Neal, Thompson, shot clock at seven. The pass for the Hardaway overthrow. And again, a travel on Jordan. Good play by Scott that caused the turnover. Now this one is a walk as he takes that extra step. Good defensive play by Dennis Robin to support uh, surprise on Michael Jordan. A lot of times officials will call the walk because it looks a little bit different. It looks like a walk, and they usually are right in many cases, but are right that time, wrong the play before. Her travel on uh, Michael Jordan. There's a, another traveling violation. It's called on Patty Hardaway. Three travels in a game that's, uh, that's two months worth for Michael. Epidemic. Both sides as the officials very diligently walking or watching the walk. It's funny, they like to call the walk, but yet they're letting players more and more carry the ball, get their hand underneath on their dribble. I don't know which one you gave more of an advantage on. Just under two minutes to go in the third quarter. Short to the fadeaway. 73 69 Orlando. Michael has 35. Here's some pressure. Jordan poked it away, but O'Neal able to hold on. Scott he was looking for the three, could not get it off. Scott off the dribble. Rebounded by Rodman. Shaq did not sprint back on defense. Maybe a little leg weary right now. Dennis Rodman.
Hitman did run hard, and even though it was a slow-looking break, Hitman found Rodman all alone underneath. Six-all run by the ball. Backdoor pass broken up by Kerr. Kerr beating Thompson to the cut. Just under a minute to go in the third. Pippen for three, way off, and rebounded by Royal. Hardaway hit out of reach it with 43 seconds to go in the third quarter. Foul on Pippen, that is number four. Well, Rodman knew that uh, Shaquille O'Neal was left in his dust all the way into the backcourt. Just ran right down the middle of the floor, right to the front of the rim, and nobody protecting there as Penny Hardaway uh, not able to help out as he was caught on the perimeter of, of, from Tony Kukoc. Even though, you know, Shaq is a slow getting back on defense, mainly because he does so many things around the basket. He's not going to be as quick as a lot of players in running the floor, so your teammates have to protect you, and that's a big area where the Magic are missing a Horace Grant. He is so good at getting back and protecting the basket in the lane for his center. One time, Chicago Bull Horace Grant sitting out with a twisted left elbow. Now, he has said that he could make it back if there is a game five, although team doctors are saying that he's out for the series. Three-point Orlando lead, 35 seconds to go in the third. Jordan getting a pick. Kerr for three, yes! And he has tied the game at 74. Steve Kerr, the one-time member of the Orlando Magic, who did the job coming off the bench on Saturday, has tied it up. Post-up move by Dennis Scott. And a loose ball foul is called on the Magic. With 12 and 5 10 seconds remaining in the third. Out on Scott. It puts Orlando over the limit. So the Bulls with an opportunity to take the lead for the first time today. Well, not a bad play for Dennis Scott, who was a much improved post player, making his move in the lane, but an outstanding defensive job by Dennis Rodman, who actually mistimed his, mistimed his jump, but just chipped the ball a little bit to himself as Brian Hill looking out to uh, a couple of his players, looking at Brooke Thompson, giving him some hand signals and eye contact, getting him uh, straight on what they want to do in this last 12 and a half seconds. Rodman missing on the first free throw. So he is one of three for the day. Michael Jordan will get a rest. And Rodman has given Chicago a one-point lead. We're down to 10 seconds left in the third. Three. And Hardaway calls for time with two and four-tenths seconds to go. It's a 20-second timeout. Well, it's been amazing throughout this series how Phil Jackson has been getting contributions from his bench. We saw Judd Bushler hit a couple of threes in the first half. Randy Brown doesn't play a lot of minutes, but he forced a 20-second timeout there with intense pressure on uh, Penny Hardaway and then getting help on the double team. A reminder, tomorrow NBA playoff action will move to prime time, 9 p.m. Eastern. Sean Kemp and the Sonics going up against Carmelo in the Jazz Game 5 of the Western Conference Final. It's tomorrow here at 9 o'clock Eastern time right here on NBC. The Sonics holding on for the victory yesterday. And they are now up three games to one. Chicago has outscored Orlando 28-18 here in the third quarter, led by Michael Jordan, who has hit for 15 of Chicago's 28 points. Jordan, in all, has 35. Two and four-tenths seconds remaining in the third quarter. And Joe Wolf will throw in.
himself outscoring the Magic in game two, 17-16, to uh, rally the Bulls in that come-from-behind effort. Had a very quiet game here on Saturday. Did not score at all in the third quarter. Orlando held to 18 points, outscored 28-18 in the third as Chicago was able to reel off a 10-1 spurt in the last three minutes and 20 seconds. Pressure by the Bulls, leading to the bucket by Hawker. Only six turnovers for the Magic in the first half. They turned it over six times in that third quarter and then start off the fourth with a bad pass from Brooks Thompson. Brooks Thompson has been vulnerable in handling the ball. He's in there because Brian Shaw still bothered by the muscle spasms in his neck. And Hardaway had it deflected out. Brian Hill, in effect, has two point guards out there with Brooks Thompson, but in trouble. And this is when you like to get the ball into the hands of Penny Hardaway, spread the floor, and let him make the decision. As he just did. So Hardaway, 7 of 14, shooting 20 points. And the Bulls now lead 77, 76. The Bulls have a three guard alignment with Jordan, Hopper, and Kerr on the floor, along with Kuko and Rodman. Shot clock at six. Jordan, yes. Michael Jordan with 37 points. And it's the Bulls with a three-point lead. And as I said earlier, with the shot clock winding down, the ball always seems to wind up in his hands with his teammates expecting Michael to do something great. He did one right there. Good fake by Scott. And a Scott struggling again after hitting on his first two shots. Hopper to Rodman. Oh, a foul. Dennis Scott won for his last 10 after hitting on his first two. Dennis Rodman headed to the line. Well, Michael Jordan with the taller Penny Hardaway on really doesn't get up in the air high enough to challenge that shot. Double team coming as Michael just feels so comfortable this afternoon on that little fadeaway jump shot. And Dennis Rodman was furious with himself for missing what he felt was a makeable layup there as he was fouled on that play. Rodman, two of five of the line, did not want to hear any advice from Tony Kukoc. Guided him away quickly. He could probably give some to Tony on his three-pointer, who has been struggling mightily. Bulls 80, and the Magic 76 again. Pressure by Chicago. And what is happening, Penny Hardaway is getting to the middle of the floor against that pressure, hoping to get a pass there so that he can get numbers and attack. And Hardaway held by Hopper, prevented the drive. Hopper realizing that Hardaway had a beat, so for Ron Hopper, his second foul. Smart move on the part of Harper. That would have been some kind of play as Penny Hardaway was licking his lips with Dennis Rodman running at him. Hey, Thompson. Shot for Curry, passed on it. Here's Jordan. And he'll regroup. Rodman. And it poked away. Hopper on the recovery. And the foul is called as uh, Tomcat got to the rebound and was hit from behind by Jordan. Timeout taken with nine. 55 to go on the fourth. The Bulls lead by four points. We'll be right back. Miller, where great taste runs in the family, brings you Miller Moments. Today we look back at a Memorial Day classic, the Magic of the Pacers. Last year, game four of the conference finals, and Penny Hardaway's three-pointer gave the Magic a 93-92 lead with one and three ten seconds to play, but it was enough time for Rick Smith to hit the game-winning shot at the buzzer for a 94-93 victory. In recognition of this moment, the Miller Brewing Company will donate $1,000 to the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund. There were several other Memorial Day uh, memories that stand out. Boston over the uh, L.A. Lakers in a massacre. Chicago beat Detroit for a sweep. You recall the Pistons walking off the court, not congratulating the Bulls, and then uh, Michael Jordan three years ago with a 54-point outburst against the New York Knicks. Well, Jordan with 37 here today, and the Bulls have come from behind and now lead by four. Orlando 
at one point led by 11. O'Neal trying to keep it alive, but Pippen able to handle it. Oh, Penny Hardaway looking confused offensively against the good defender, Ron Harper, forced to take a tough shot. It looked like he didn't have any confidence to put the ball on the floor. Longley back on the floor. Tony Kuko. And a traveling violation is called. So the Magic will get it back. And the coaching staff of, uh, of Chicago arguing that call. Dennis Robin injured that left elbow when he banged into a uh, 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 Dennis Rodman a little bit earlier as Bowie has replaced him. Here is Bowie. Thompson. And the Bulls now lead 80-78. Dennis Scott hurt his elbow. Involved in the collision with Dennis Rodman. Get a report on Scott in a moment. Here's Kuko. Tony Kuko from downtown. He was two for 33 from three-point land prior to that basket. Well, he was the three-point killer in games three and four of the regular season against the Magic, and mainly responsible for Chicago winning both of those ball games. Keel O'Neal able to beat the double team. Bulls now lead 83-80. Told from the Orlando bench that Dennis Scott is okay, although he is in some degree of pain. Might be able to return. Oh, Pippen rocked by O'Neal. And that may be a flagrant foul. little bit of a hyper extension there as he got his uh, arm and the lower part of his arm caught on uh, Dennis Rodman and bent back a little bit. Tyrus Grant can tell him all about that as he's suffering in street clothes. Well, no flagrant on that. I thought I saw the, uh, the indication it was just a hard foul. A call on Shaquille for his fourth. Longley. And the Bulls now lead 85-80. 35 remaining in the fourth quarter. And the Bulls keep that pressure on in the backcourt, trying to make the magic use, use up a lot of time. And now Shaq, for the second straight time, posting on the right side. Illegal defense. Call for the third time against Chicago. So Hardaway will uh, shoot the uh, technical. Away, four of six at the line. There's some confusion as to who was illegal. Referee Hugh Holland put up a two and a five. And both Tony Kukoc, who wears number seven, and Steve Kerr, who wears number 25, looking around asking who was Hunt. Hugh Holland said, what difference does it make? One of you two. <laughs> or both. Chicago with a four-point lead. 20 to go in the fourth quarter. O'Neal with the bullet pass. Not handled by Wolf. Taking the post-up position, a place he's not all that familiar with, throwing the jump hook, getting tip on the wrist, and getting the opportunity for a three-point play as Michael Jordan rests and happy first teammates. Smartest army in the world. Be all you can be. And by Budweiser, official sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Summer Games. This Bud's for you. Back in Orlando, the Bulls with an 87-81 lead on the Magic. Another solid performance by Dennis Rodman has had a terrific series. He already has two championship rings as a member of the Detroit Pistons. We asked Dennis, what is the difference between playing with Detroit and now with Chicago? 
in Detroit, and you you had the mentality to just go out there and kick someone's ass. Seriously, just hit, you know, your butt is ours. Here's like, we can do it either way. We can do it physically, we can do it mentally. It doesn't matter. We're going to do it. If we got, we got the right stuff, we're going to do it. Well, Dennis has said many times, here's a steal for Chicago. Brooks Thompson run into by uh, Luke Longley. Oh, number 25, Steve Kerr. Well, Steve Kerr picks up the foul. I was about to say about Dennis Rodman has been asked many times about how great this Chicago team is. Obviously, very, very great. But he has also said that he felt his championship teams in Detroit were better because the league was a lot stronger at that particular time. Chicago with a 23-8 run that goes back to the third quarter. That's over the last eight and a half minutes. The Bulls have hit nine of their last shots. That also dates back to the third quarter. As uh, Shaquille makes his move, the foul is called. Basketball count. Longley picks up number five. We have 6.34 remaining in the fourth quarter, and the Bulls lead 88-81. Biggest lead of the game for Chicago. Hardaway fires up a three. Rodman with rebound number 11. Well, the Magic are doing a much better job of spacing in the last couple of minutes. They did not do a good job of that in the early minutes of the fourth quarter. If they keep the floor space, they'll get some good scoring opportunities. Just under six minutes to go on the floor. Steve Kerr, another big bucket by Steve Kerr. It's a nine-point Chicago lead. The Bulls looking to make it a four-game sweep and head to the NBA Finals. Hardaway. Hardaway is fouled. Penny Hardaway, after the good start, has hit only one of his last seven shots. Foul committed by Kerr. And Hardaway will shoot a pair. Well, the double teams are coming fast and furious now on Shaquille O'Neal when much of the three quarters trying to play him with single coverage and a big reason why the Bulls feel comfortable coming down to double teaming. No real main threats as far as three-point shooters are concerned out on the floor. However, Brooks Thompson is certainly a competent three-point shooter. Bowie will make one from time to time, but the best three-point shooter, Dennis Scott, sitting on the bench right now with a sore left elbow, and yet he has been struggling mightily three for 19 in the series from beyond the arc. Scott, after the good start, only 3 of 12 from the field today. Here's pressure by the Magic. Hardaway got a piece of it, but recaptured by Rodman. Eight-point Chicago lead after they trail most of the way. Jordan. Michael Jordan with 39. And you know that Michael is enjoying this. He's back at the scene of his, his biggest playoff uh, miscues here in Orlando a year ago. And you know that he is using it as a positive. We're down to five minutes remaining on the floor. Penny Hardaway looking around, not comfortable with the spacing of the Magic. Thompson fired up and counts and the foul. was looking for Thompson to make a move and take his man out of there. He got his man out of there and wound up getting the ball. And that's what's happened to the Magic throughout this series. So much standing around when the double teams come because that's the scheme. So you know where your spot-up shooters are. But from time to time, you have to read the situation and make the appropriate cuts. And Luke Longley fouled out on the play. 22 minutes. Six points, five rebounds. Right at the start of that move by Thompson, Steve Kerr took a shot in the chin, although a little overreaction on the part of Steve to try and draw the attention of the official who waved it off. And it was wrongly called for the foul. Three-point play by Thompson, 92-85, Chicago. 
just under five minutes remaining of the four. The Magic desperately trying to hang on, looking to force a fifth game in Chicago. Short for three. Michael Jordan with 42 points. And the only hesitation there to make sure both feet behind the line. All the way, swept aside by Rodman. Foul is called on O'Neal. And for Shaquille, that is number five. Well, the Bulls able to break down the full court pressure of the Magic, getting the ball to the middle of the floor where Scotty Pippen had a good look at the defense and where his people were. And no doubt he picked out the best person open on that left side. So the Chicago Bulls, who went 72 and 10 during the regular season, best record of the history of the league, looking to continue the dominance coming into today. They had won 10 of 11 in the playoffs. Out on Thompson. Both teams are over the limit. And Jordan will go to the line. While the Orlando Magic are now facing the prospect of being swept from the playoffs for the third straight season. And it has to make you wonder, well, this team has uh, shown very little in mental toughness or growth. The injuries can be used as a cop-out at this point, and certainly they have been severe injuries, particularly the one suffered by, by Horace Grant. But I, I think the main problem is no true leader on this ball club. Well, you have the two young players in Shaquille O'Neal and Penny Hardaway, extremely talented, maybe at this stage of their career a little bit uneasy about stepping on the other's coat. I don't think they can do that. I think Penny Hardaway, being the ball handler and the guy out on the floor and the point guard, he has to become the leader of this team, and he will in time. Here is Kerr. With seven points, and it's the Bulls 98 of the Magic 87 with three and a half minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. And the foul committed by Kerr. Foul number 25, Steve Kerr. His third penalty situation. So Curry to the free throw line for the first time. Now, Marv, I don't think Shaquille O'Neal would be all broken up about the fact that Penny Hardaway would take on that leadership role. Also, when you have a, a player as experienced as Horace Grant and plays the type of game that he does, he certainly can be a leader on the team. But when the fellows on the team are asked throughout the course of the year, who's the leader, who's the leader, they say, well, we don't worry about that. We just go out and play as a team. And because they've been so successful and winning so many games and winning them rather handily, they haven't had to worry about it. This being the toughest test that they've had to face and getting blown out in game one really took, the, I think, the heart out of this team. Not that they necessarily gave up because they came back strong in that second game, but then losing the 18-point lead further took it out of them. Now Hardaway is a terrific all-around player, but does he have the demeanor to be a, a true leader? I think he does. I think it's just a, another year or two. He's only 24 years old. 98-89, Chicago on top as we come up on three minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Pippen's pass broken up. You see Dennis Scott is back on the floor. Last touch by the Bulls, and Scott will throw in. Well, this is where Penny Hardaway really has to be a leader. He's got to make something happen for himself or kick out for a three-point shot and let Shaq clean up on the offensive boards if it's a miss. Very tentative here. Back clock at six. Out of three. And broken up by Jordan. Just an awful sequence by the Magic. Leading to this. Rodman, not able to hit. Out of three on one, but rebounds. And Jordan will regroup. Last possession may be symbolic of, of the problems that uh, this Orlando club has. Well, Penny has had his problems in the fourth quarters of this series. Some of it has been due to fatigue. But on that last one, Marvin just looked unsure of what he 
she do? Shaquille O'Neal handling and then giving it up to Hardaway. Two minutes remaining in this fourth quarter. And the Bulls lead 98 to 91. Good coach played by Scott. Shot clock at five. Jordan with the pull up. Yes. 45 points for Michael Jordan. He is 16 for 22 in what has been another extraordinary performance. Thompson, wild shot, but able to go glass. Thompson has hit six of eight. 15 points. And the Bulls now lead 100 to 93. A minute 20 remaining on the four. Jordan firing one up. He thought he was fouled. Rodman got him the ball back, though. But did not hit the rim, so the shot clock is down to five. Kuko shot blocked, and now the foul is coming. With a minute five remaining in this fourth quarter. Foul is called on Jordan. The Bulls lead by seven. The Magic will be headed to the line. We'll be right back. Left in the fourth quarter. It is Chicago 100 and Orlando 93. Chicago with the three and a 20 in the timeout department. Three conventional and a 20 in Orlando with three timeouts to go. Well, there you see the big difference in scoring first half for Shaq in the second half. Actually, in game one with the big blowout, Shaq hardly playing a minutes there in the 20-point win by the Chicago Bulls in game number three. And in this particular fourth quarter, for example, just about every time he has touched the ball in the low post, he's been quickly double teamed and forced to give the ball up. And that's why throughout the course of the season, the Magic as their go-to guy down the stretch has been that man, Penny Hardaway. Dennis Scott at the free throw line for the first time. Scott an 82% free throw shooter. A minute five remaining in the fourth quarter. Scott can bring the Magic with it five. Another example of how off his shooting has been. And Michael Jordan still smiling. He was unhappy with that call. He felt he was going for a loose ball off that rebound and looking out to the official saying, see, I told you. So Scott misses on both. For Dennis Scott, going back to miserable final series he had last year, along with Nick Anderson against the Houston Rockets. Uh, another extremely difficult time. And uh, Dennis today, 3 of 12 from the field, 0 for 2 at the free throw line. And it looked like Dennis was going to have a good ball game coming out and making those first two field goals. was aggressive uh, defensively, primarily on Scotty Pippen. Did a good job early, but then has just been unable to find the range. Dennis Rodman now 4 of 7 at the line. 8 points along with his 14 rebounds. 8 point Chicago lead. Make it 9 with a minute 2 to go. Thompson handling against Kerr. The Bulls coming from behind. Orlando led by as many as 11. Hardaway rejected by Rodman. Here's Scott. 102 95 with 47 seconds to go in the fourth. And Jordan will handle against Bowie. Now Pippen facing the double team. Foul is called. It's on Scott. Both teams are over the limit. And the delayed call at that is Dennis Scott saying, what? I called it five seconds after I grabbed the best percentage free throw shooter on the Chicago Bulls. The man to foul was Scotty Pippen, who struggled from the line when they had him double teamed as the Magic just kind of lost all you know, mental awareness after coming out with a lot of emotion in this ball game, and it just gradually, gradually wore down as Michael Jordan held the ship afloat 
for the Chicago Bulls. And really kind of in the history of Michael Jordan, when he has had to score so many points by himself, which is pretty much the case today at Pippen in double figures, that the Bulls have lost those ball games. But he was able to play such a marvelous game today and carry it home. 16 of 23 from the field, 10 of 12 at the line, along with five assists for Jordan. 104-95, Chicago, with 35 seconds remaining in the Orlando Magic season. Hardaway, seven-point Bulls lead. We're down to 25 seconds. And the foul is given by Thompson, so that will put Pippen at the line. Orlando trying to stop the clock. Pippen, two of four at the line and a 67% free throw shooter during the season. Down to 23 and 8 tenths seconds to go in this fourth quarter. Well, it wasn't a typical all-around Scotty Pippen performance. He played so well in game three as he comes up way short there as he appeared to come out of his perimeter shooting slump. The, the Bulls seem to feel when he is on with his outside shot that they are unbeatable because it just opens up so many other things for Scottie Pippen at the offensive end to create. And you know you're always going to get a tremendous defensive effort from him. Bulls 105 and the Magic 97. Light pressure being shown by Chicago. Thompson. Thompson with 17 points off the bench, down to a six-point lead. Ten wow. seconds to go, and again a late whistle on the, uh, on the foul. Almost like you, Holland, saying, guys, you got to foul harder so I can blow the whistle. Magic just tiptoeing up to Ron Harper. Two of three at the line. He's a 70% shooter during the uh, regular season. Oh, the Bulls' defense has just been absolutely terrific throughout this series. Very intelligent the way they decided to play Shaquille O'Neal. Ineffective in so much single coverage. In effect, let him score some points, but keep the other people out of the game. Nick Anderson having trouble getting involved when he was healthy. And the, the key guy I think they felt was Dennis Scott with his ability to break games open from beyond the three-point line. And they kept him out of this series offensively. And a timeout taken by the Magic. Nine seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. The Bulls lead by seven as they make their way to the NBA Finals where they would face either Seattle or Utah during the regular season. The Bulls and the Sonics split the uh, two games. 97-92 uh, win by Seattle in Seattle and Chicago winning in Chicago. The Bulls won both games against Utah. Michael Jordan averaging 32 points a game in the two against the Jazz. Nine seconds to go. Hardaway. Hit by the shot. And now took a shot in the eye. With three and seven tenths seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. Steve Kerr apparently flipped it. Well, the Chicago Bulls defense with the Magic down seven, aware that they're going to try to set something up from behind the line, making sure they had a lot of pressure out there to force any Magic player with the ball inside the three-point line. And Penny Hardaway just trying to get any kind of score he could that paid for it with the poke in the eye. It appears that uh, Penny is all right. Steve Kerr comes over to uh, Penny Hardaway. apologize. Hardaway, 7 of 10 at the uh, free throw line but once again the strong start and did not do it down the stretch and again it looks like a good stat line but the fourth quarter is so important in any basketball game and in particular these playoff games and that's when you have to have your take charge guy to make sure he gets your team into what you want to do in your offensive end and the foul given on jordan to stop the clock brooks thompson picks it up 
So Michael Jordan back to the line. He's uh, 10 of 12 at the uh, free throw line. We're now down to two and seven tenths of seconds remaining. The Chicago Bulls making it to the NBA Finals season able to break the record of the 1972 Los Angeles Lakers who had won 69 and lost the 13 a record-breaking 72 victory season they've been saying all along that it would not mean anything unless they win another championship well they will have that opportunity as they are headed back to the final round and I think they're as surprised even as the magic are with Orlando's performance I think they were anticipating a much more difficult series well, Jordan missing on both, but did not matter. The Bulls have swept the Magic. Jordan finishes with 45 points. The Bulls do it 106 to 101 as the Orlando Magic have been swept from the playoffs for the third straight season. Keel O'Neal had the good start. However, in the second half, as uh, we have discussed, similar to Penny Hardaway, did not come up big. Shaq finishes with 28, and uh, his offseason has begun, as has Penny Hardaway's. Hardaway finishing with 28 points. Let's go to Ahmad Rashad on the floor. Ahmad? All right, thanks, Marv. Michael, a year ago when you lost this team in the playoffs, it a lot of motivation for you, and you came down here and said that it wasn't a personal vendetta, but a team vendetta, but you've got to feel awful good about this series. Well, I felt good that, you know, we, we really saw a challenge and we were faced with the challenge. I can say in every diff, every game, a different guy stepped up and gave us support. And I think that's what this team is all about. It's not a one individual type of team. And, you know, today it was my turn. Some of the guys couldn't get it going offensively. You know, and I stepped it up a little bit and, you know, everybody rallied around that. You guys have been so exceptional in the fourth quarter, offensively and defensively. How do you explain that? Well, I think that's the time of the, in the playoffs, that's the most crucial time. You know, you, you want to execute, you want to play solid defense, you want to do all the necessary things to win the games. You know, last year, you know, I wasn't in a rhythm to do that for this team. Or well, we really didn't have a good understanding for each other before I can do that. So this year I had a better understanding about the team, and I think we did, about, they did had a, had a better understanding about myself. And, you know, we, just, we were able to function down the stretch. All right, we will see you in the finals. Congratulations. All right, let's go over to Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Ahmad. I'm here with Dennis Rodman. Dennis, another big ball game today. Offensive-minded. How come you became so offensive-minded in this entire series? Well, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I'm looking for a shot. Even though I miss it, that means I'm aggressive. I'm a force down there no matter what. But uh, like they say, no matter how big he is, he can fall just as easy. How much did the team need your enthusiasm? It seemed as though they were lackadaisical in the beginning of three or four of these games, and you lifted the team significantly today. How much did they need your enthusiasm? Well, the coach always says, go out there and give us a spark. Give us something. And, you know, I said it back in my mind, I got to do something. I have to do That's my job. I go out there and get a team to lift, and, you know, when you got guys, a group of guys like this, playing, playing their asses off, hey, you got to give them credit. Are you surprised, Dennis, now that this season, as you head to the finals, how well you've been accepted by the Bulls? Well, I think that they realize that they, they see a hardworking man when they see one, and uh, hopefully I get to stay here a couple more years. If not, it's been fun, it's been great, and uh, let's go do it. All right, congratulations to you, Dennis. Uh, thanks a lot, hi, Alexis. Back over to you, Mark. All right, Jim, and when we return, we'll be uh, talking with Scotty Pippen of the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls are headed to the NBA Finals. They have swept the Orlando Magic. Series in five. The series would then begin. The NBA Finals series would start on Friday in Chicago. The Bulls over the Magic, 106 to 101. Obviously, if Utah wins, the series continues, and then we shall see. But congratulations, uh, Scotty Pippen. Thanks, As uh, you guys have... Uh, continued right through. I know you have been saying the 72 win season wouldn't mean a thing unless you go all the way and now you're going to have your chance in the NBA Finals. Well definitely. I mean uh, even though we swept this team in this series this is a very tough series for us. Uh, trying to contain Penny, Shaquille down low, uh, their three-point shooters. Uh, they made this a very difficult series for us but I think as a ball club we stayed focused. We knew what we wanted to do and who we wanted to shut down. Was there a particular philosophy going into uh, today's game? Michael Jordan uh, seemed to want it offensively at the start and obviously had uh, one of his remarkable performances. Well, it wasn't really. You know, we didn't know what type of uh, enthusiasm the team was going to come out with. And I think their fans here really gave them a big lift. And they came out, they played hard. 
after about 48 minutes. But uh, Michael had the hot hand today, and he was unstoppable and really kind of carried our team. Are you, are you surprised by the ease in which you were able to handle the Orlando Magic? Uh, I, I know they had injuries, but the injuries came after the damage was done. Well, I, I felt like that we got a good feel for this team, you know. After getting Dennis on his ball club, getting Michael back in his rhythm, uh, you know, we had realized we had a very strong ball team. And uh, from that point, it was just a matter of us falling into our rhythm and, you know, really getting a feel for this ball club here. Now, Shaquille O'Neal and Penny Hardaway today had the strong first halves, but not able to do it in the second half. Was there a particular adjustment that uh, you guys were able to pull off? Well, that's, that's been a uh, thing the whole series. Those guys have to carry this team offensively. And if they can carry them 48 minutes, then it's a different ball game. But we know our defense is going to wear them down somewhere within that 48 minutes. All right, Scotty, congratulations, and uh, thanks for uh, joining us. Thanks, Mark. All right, Scotty Pippen of the Chicago Bulls as the Bulls make it to the NBA Finals once again. The final score, the Chicago Bulls over the Orlando Magic, 106 to 101. The NBA playoffs on NBC will continue tomorrow night in prime time with game five of the Western Conference Finals between the Utah Jazz and the Seattle Supersonics. Sonics, of course, lead that series three games to one. That's tomorrow night, 9 o'clock Eastern time right here on NBC. Tonight on NBC, a special one-hour Fresh Prince, followed by the powerful world premiere movie, Shattered Mind, starring Heather Locklear, for Matt Gukas, Ahmad Rashad, and Jim Gray. Marv Albert saying so long. This has been the NBA.